watch it. It has a hot tub, a couch, a TV, a bathroom, and a bed. That room right there is the pod simulator, so you can go down and use your deep sea vessel, which Mr. Surfer Dude talked about earlier. That is just a regular hotel room, which has a couch, nice TV, a bathroom, and a bedroom. And same with that one right there. The arcade is awesome. It has so many awesome games. It's very unique and interesting. That is the uh, basketball court. And where in the corner, there's a little gym where you can work out. My side of the room, which is the awesomer room, is where you get to enter up like this, and you get to stand on the pink mermaid rug. The other cool thing is you get to have a lobby and free candy. Also, this is the fun part about mine, is you get a spa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the restaurant, which he doesn't have a restaurant. And you get a deluxe room and two regular rooms with both bigger TVs than he has. Well, the other cool thing about our hotel is it's pressurized. So no water leaking and you can breathe. The other cool thing is it has a giant M and there's going to be glass right here. We didn't put that on so people could see easier. And then there's glass right here and here. So the M is very important because, see this small M? Well, big M, but it has, one, the awesome sign, two, it gets all our oxygen because from the M, goes all the way up to the surface, and someone pumps air into it. <laughs> and it gets our electricity. We run all of our electricity, and that's also how we get our internet. What's up, surfer dudes? Uh, well, there's three zones in the ocean. There's the sunlight, the twilight, and midnight. The sunlight is very bright and it is also called the euphoric zone and the reason it's called the euphoric zone is because in Greek that means well lit. Um, most of the animals, well some of the animals in the sunlight zone have what they call counter shading where your belly is really white and their top is blue so that if you look down all you see is the blue if you look down up, all you see is the white looking up into the sky. And um, the sunlight zone also has many animals that have photosynthesis, which is where they use energy from the light and turn it into nutrients. Sunlight zone can go from all the way to the surface, all the way down to 660 feet below. Let's go into a little bit more detail about the sunlight zone and their organisms. One of the organisms that live here that is unique and interesting is the algae and is also known as seaweed. Another interesting, unique, and awesome organism that lives here is the red soft coral. Another cool animal organism of the sunlight zone is the diatoms, which have a shell around there that's like quartz. Another awesome organism that lives here is the amphipod. One of the coolest of the sunlight zone is the Portuguese man of war. It's pretty much a jellyfish, but it floats on the surface. Another cool one is the tetrapod, which is a zooplankton. Another unique and interesting organism is the seagrass, which is pretty much just grass, but underwater. The, co the copopod is really cool, and there's over 400, or er, 45,000 species. That's what I meant. But my personal favorite is the gray reef shark, which is about to eat Justin's beaver head off. I'm going to tell you all about the Twilight Zone now. So, the Twilight Zone is also known as the Dysphoric Zone, which means poorly lit in Greek. This middle layer stretches 
from about 660 feet to 3,300 feet. This zone is dark blue or black. No plants live here because there's not enough light to create photosynthesis. The water is cold and has very high pressure. Most animals that live here have big eyes or giant teeth so they can see in the water. Most of them also are small and have sharp teeth. Many fish are bioluminescent, which means they can create their own light. Yeah! A cool fish in the twilight zone is the oar fish. They don't come to shore very much unless they're dead. They can grow up to 26 feet. 56. The cookie cutter shark is very interesting. It leaves bowl like cutouts in its prey's flesh. Kind of like how Ema eats her apples. The loose jaw is very interesting because one, it's also known as the dragonfish, and two, it creates a red bioluminescent light, which it can communicate with other loose jaws because not very many other fish can see red light. The giant squid is one of the biggest invertebrates. It is also known as the kraken. The longest one is 57 feet long. The deep sea shrimp is very cool because when it, it is frightened or is about to be eaten, they throw up shiny bioluminescent fluid which startles their enemy and then they run away. Well, swim. The rat tail gets his name because he has a long rat-like tail. The bell jelly is one of my favorite animals in the Twilight Zone because it's not really a jellyfish because it's a lot smaller and the color. Some have over a hundred tentacles. What's up surfer dudes again? This is the Midnight Zone and some of the interesting facts about this is that the Midnight Zone is also called the Aphotic Zone which means no light in Greek. And it stretches from around 3,300 feet, which is the end of the twilight zone, and ends at the sea floor. The temperatures there are less than freezing, so less than 32 degrees. But it doesn't freeze because of the high pressure and the salinity in the water. Okay, so most of the creatures down here are very unique and interesting because they have to adapt to the very high pressure and the darkness and the freezing temperatures. Uh, some of the animals are the blobfish, which literally has no muscles at all, and they just sit there, wait for their food, and go, oh. Yeah. Um, here's a close-up of the blobfish. The next organism that is unique and interesting is the tube worm. The tube worm is very long, it can be up to eight feet and as thick as an arm. The tripod fish has three very long fins which they use to basically walk on the sea floor. The deep sea hatchet fish gets its name from its hatchet shape and it is also very thin. The deep sea anglerfish has a bioluminescence thingy that hangs over its head, which you use like a fishing lure. The crumb jellyfish is very unique and interesting because it actually isn't like very many other jellyfish because its crown is shaped like that, so it looks like an umbrella. Benthos are animals or organisms that live 
on the ocean floor and don't swim. Nectin are organisms that swim freely and plankton are tiny plant-like one-celled organisms that have photosynthesis. Surfer dudes, this is the location of our underwater resort. We located it 50 miles off the coast of Guam, 400 feet below the surface. We located it there because it isn't safe enough in the trench and nobody would be able to see. This is where we located our resort. This is the surface and this is Guam. We located it here because it would be hard to locate it on the slope and it would be too dark. And if we locate it on the edge, it could slide down. This is the gym suit. We use it because scuba equipment doesn't allow you to dive down 400 feet. We drive a boat to our surface station and our guests take a gym suit 400 feet down to our resort. This is a picture of the trench and its surroundings. This is Guam and we located our resort about right here. What do I say for this one? This is what Guam looks like. This little dot right here is approximately 1.5 emas. And this right here is the blue whale at its deepest diving point, the largest animal on earth. And way down here is the bottom of the trench. Hey Guamians, what's up? Okay, so when you come to our hotel, you get to take these awesome things called side trips in our two submersibles, which are like submarines, but awesomer. And so the first one you can take is to the edge of the Mariana Trench, where you get to see weird fish. Like, if you're lucky, you can see the blobfish, but usually you'll just see little fluorescent ones. The other one you can take is into the Mariana Trench. Well, you will have more luck to see the blobfish, but still. And you'll get to see other fluorescent fish, which are even cooler. Now let me tell you a little bit about the submersibles which are these two things, the Deep Flight Super Falcon and the Deep Flight Marlin. This one can hold four people, so you can take your wife, your kids, your kids and your wife, whatever. And this one can hold two. You get a scientist in each, so you won't be stranded. They're really safe, and they're meant to go down all the way to the Mariana Trench, which is seven miles. They're made by these people called Hawk, Hawks o o Ocean Technology, and... Well, they're also pretty cool, so. The other cool thing about the submersibles is, one, they're buoyant. So if, like, you run out of gas or something, they'll just float back up. The other is you can see 360 degrees, and they turn with ease, so it's like you're flying. And they have wings, so. You get to the submersibles by getting on your gym sh suits and going up to our surface station. But, so you can drive them, you have to take a bot and swim your chest. And it's not that boring. It's like playing a video game. So, pretty fun. The other thing we have to talk about is ocean currents. Kind of boring, but they helpful. You use them, well, we use the Kuroshio current to push us until it goes the wrong way. Because they go different ways in different parts of the world. And, we also use the trade winds. Whereas, when we're surfaced, going to our surface station, they can blow us. We have to watch the weather, though, because if the winds get too high, so will the currents. We don't want to crash into any rocks. The Mariana's Mansion is located in the sunlight zone, which means that we're still taking in sunlight. It, because it's only 400 feet below the surface. Since there's so much light near our lodge, these are the animals that will be living there. Some of them are tilapia, shrimp, catfish, jellyfish, rays, sharks, turtles, coral, and horseshoe crab. Resources. This is where we farm our fish. We catch them from oceans when they are larvae and raise them in separate cages. After they grow up, we feed, them, we feed the fish to our guests 
and or sell them to other countries. This is the Tao Fofo Bay. Our aquaculture technology is located in the Tao Fofo Bay, which is an inlet in the southeast coast of Guam. It is also used for surfing and has a beach of brown sand that looks like mud. We located it there because it's by land and it's easy to handle. The three animals that we farm are tilapia, catfish, and shrimp. We farm a lot of these because they are popular fish and are easy to farm. Architectural Critique Take 1. Hi, my name is Art Vandelay. I'm an architect and I've been asked to give an architectural critique on the Mariana Mansion. One thing to note is that is the central, central focal part of the mansion is the hyperbolic chamber in which people enter the, the hotel. They come in and one of the major features of the hotel is not only the lobby, which is oftentimes the center focus of a hotel, but also the basketball court which uh, uh, serves as a, as a major um, draw for those people who want to come and play basketball underwater. <laughs> Architectural critique take two. On the other side uh, of the hyperbolic chamber is the lobby, which features plush blue couches and two candy machines, M and M, which is the logo for Mariana Mansion, and that people can come and lounge and take candy. And if you look, I'll pull the top off one of the candy machines to show you the candy that's in there. And <gasps> M&M's. Isn't that wonderful? Now other features of the hotel are the different rooms that are featured on both the sides of the structure. By the way, I should mention that the structure is made of, it's a, it's a shell. It's a homogenous shell. It's made of tungsten foam. Titanium foam, I'm sorry. Titanium foam that was developed actually in the space shuttle, which is actually a true story. Now, as you go through the uh, entire uh, hotel, you'll see that the, the rooms line both sides of the, of the lobby and the, the basketball court. I mentioned the basketball court in, in the take one. Now, some of the more deluxe rooms have hot tubs, as shown here. And also, at both ends of the structure, we have plate glass window that's about three inches thick to withstand the pressures at 400 feet below sea level. Now, some of the rooms, in fact, all of the rooms have, are, are featured with red beds and furnishing. Actually, it's pink furnishings and uh, couches to give that kind of the soft touch. And let's see, what else? Oh, I forgot to mention the structure. Uh, up above, the giant M truss, which uh, forms the, the roof, which has been taken away on this particular model, so we can see the interior, uh, forms the roof structure of the Mariana Mansion. Now, there's other trusses that we have taken out also. There's more than one truss. There's several of them uh, throughout the, the structure. 400 feet below sea level, someone might ask, how is this place heated? Well, good question. This place is heated, the entire mansion is heated uh, through a series of heat pumps where we get heat from the earth. Even at 32, 34 degrees, we can, we can garnish that heat from the earth and heat the mansion. Architectural review take three. Uh, one other thing a person might ask is how do they get fresh air into this hotel since it's 400 feet below sea level? Another good question. The air is pumped from the surface down through pipes that come up through the structure and people can get fresh ventilation air there in order to handle the fresh air exchange as people breathe, you know, we give off carbon uh, dioxide and so it has to be replenished with oxygen and so that comes from the surface. So all in all, the Mariana Mansion is a hotel that really has a, a built environment that for most people would be just like being at home except for the fact that they can sit here and look out the windows and see all kinds of fish. Okay, so what's up, sir? Ready? <laughs> well, for the side chips, you eat it. And what are you doing? Fishy song! Fishy song! This is a fishy song! Oh, 
Hola, Super Goobs and Ema. This is the location of our underwater resort. We located it near the Marianas Mansion. Okay. Oh, sorry. Some of the awesome organisms that live here are the loose jaw. The loose jaws are very interesting because really. This is where we locate the next zone is called the Midnight Zone. It stretches from where the Twilight Zone ends, which is 3,300 feet, to the bottom of the sea floor. <laughs> yeah! 